G'day everyone out there in internet land, it's Moose here at Moose Marine. How you doing? I'm just making sure that my little flash is on. There we go. Yeah, so g'day guys, it's Anthony at Moose Marine and we're in the back room again playing with some more fun marine electronics and today I wanted to show you um, the Garmin Grid 10 external remote, what it is and how to connect it. Um, eh, and why not? It's a happy Sunday, so I hope you're all having a good weekend. So as most of you may know, or some of you might not know, the Garmin GPS map range, with the exception of two models, is touchscreen only. This is an 8416, part of the 8400 range, which is the same as the 8600 range in the United States. Uh, the only difference being mapping. And then there is also the 74X series, uh, the 94X series, 95X series, and so on and so on. Basically, the only GPS map models that don't have touchscreen, or are not touchscreen only, I should say, is the 1022 and 822. This is in the current uh, generation. In the past... There's been lots of other models too, but I'm not going to go through them all. Okay, so there's method to the, the madness with running a touchscreen only system, and especially on larger boats. The idea being is, if I move this camera around, this is a big screen here, and you might mount this into your boat that um, isn't the most ergonomic to get to. So that way, having... <laughs> put this down again. Having buttons, physical buttons on this screen wouldn't necessarily be making much sense because this unit is going to be a little too far to reach. You know, to give you an idea, like I'm here on my desk and like say I mounted that up on my helm, it'd be kind of tricky to get to those buttons. So that's one reason why they don't have physical buttons. The other reason is if you're running multiple screens, which this, um, this sort of upper level of, of unit is more likely to do and on boats that might run two or three or four or even more screens having buttons on every single one of them is kind of just a, a bit of a waste um, partially for dash size because if you have a row of buttons here and every screen has those buttons that's going to add up to quite a lot of dash space that isn't necessarily going to be in the most ergonomic position so that's the second reason. Plus, it's added cost. If you think about the dollars that are involved in having that componentry on each unit um, times by a few, it, it gets expensive. The final reason is obviously just for waterproofing and aesthetics. By having no physical openings here or buttons at all, uh, you don't have to worry so much about water ingress to the point where Garmin's actually removed the power button and has got this touch-sensitive area instead but there is times when having physical buttons is, is is obviously quite good like i mentioned earlier if this screen is is too far away whilst it's really nice to be able to touch it and especially when you go into your maps and i'll just put a simulator on real quick but let's say you're in your chart to be able to move around your chart with a with pinch the zoom etc is a lot easy um you know, marking a waypoint and then wanting to rename it, having a QWERTY keypad is a lot easier than uh, non-touch. So there is method to having touchscreen, obviously. But let's say you did want to have some physical keys. Uh, you have a few options, and I've done um I've done a few videos. I've done a few videos in the past about this, and you would have seen recently I did one on the Garmin wireless remote for the GPS map range, which allows you to control this thing wirelessly. But it's a small battery powered device. So Garmin has had for a while now uh, one of these guys. It's called the Grid 10. I'll just put the light back on the patient. And I'll move the camera a bit. So this is a wired Ethernet uh, physical button system. Uh, what's quite nice about this is its physical size lends quite well to your hand. The buttons themselves are backlit and quite large there's a rotation dial 
a joystick. The joystick also doubles as a selector. And then you've got your main buttons up the top here to indicate um, for your autopilot standby, marking of a GPS spot, your SOS functions, minus, plus for zooming in, zooming out, home screen menu, selecting of a, of a target, and back. And you can turn it on and off here. It is powered. You can see there's the power cable here. It's the same power cable that's used for the 8400 series. And it connects via Ethernet. Now, I'm just using just um, an aftermarket Ethernet cable that I had sitting in my spare parts. But it does come with a Garmin Marine Network Ethernet connector, which has the waterproof locking ring around it. But for demonstration purposes, this will do. And that just plugs into the back of any of the Garmin uh, network spots. Now, to pair this, you can see as I'm doing stuff, it's not moving anything on the screen. So you need to pair these systems with the unit first. And you can do that two ways. You can pair it from the remote control or by going into the settings. And I'll do both for you. So if I press the plus button and the home button, it comes up with this screen. And this screen says, to pair the grid device, whoop, sorry about the focusing, um, I need to use the selector wheel to highlight that add button. So I just... Rotate the wheel till it's highlighted, and I press select, and now we're paired. So now, hopefully if you can see this in one shot, as I'm rotating the wheel, you can see it cycling through all the different things on the screen. I can use the joystick to be a bit more directional. And if I find one that I really like, let's say my sonar, I'll just hit select. Scroll to what I want, hit select, and away you go. And it's quick. Like, it's... You, you become quite intuitive with it. When you're on an actual screen, you can see the blue box is highlighted, and that just indicates what you're actually playing with at that particular time. So, if it's highlighted and I press my zoom buttons, for example, it's going to change my range, which is pretty cool. However, if I go back to my home screen and go to a combo, say, I don't know, doesn't really matter, this one for now, Select that one. You can see I've got two pages now. So when I scroll the wheel, it's cycling between the active pages. So my sonar screen, my map screen, and then even this bottom one, which is my audio page. So pretty cool. So if I highlight my map screen and scroll, oops, highlight the map screen, there it is. And now use my plus minus, you'll see it zooms in and out. If I hit my standby button, it's gonna engage my autopilot. You can see little green light here indicates that I'm in uh, autopilot engaged and you can also see the green autopilot engaged down here if I hit that it just turns it on and off again if I press mark it creates a waypoint so th th what's great about this system is a it's pretty indestructible right so you can mount this in a more ergonomic position on your boat so on a lot of the larger vessels that we'd be designing up we'd put this closer to the throttle the idea being that if you're throttling you have one hand on the steering wheel one hand on the throttle but if you need to adjust anything on your sonar or mapping or whatnot or you might have it on your engine speed and you engage you might want to adjust something you can take your hand off your throttle and just reach forward to the buttons that you need so that allows a lot of flexibility. Hopefully you can see that. There's obviously the light's a bit... There we go. Yeah, a lot of flexibility in the way you design. And of course, if you run multiple screens, you only need just one of these. You can have just one of these at your helm seat, but run twin or three screens. Um, if you want, you can have one of these remotely mounted in your aft cockpit, so you can control things while this is repeated on a large screen, for example. In fact, that's quite common. Uh, we might run a HDMI out from this unit to a, a large screen TV in the saloon or, or cockpit or one of the master staterooms. And then you can hardwire one of these into your network to control it all. I will just show you how you do it via the menu on this too. So if we go settings, oh, hang on. system, station information, grid pairing, you can see it's picked up that grid 10, which is this guy, because we paired it before. 
Uh, you can see that it's active because we've already done it. I can delete it. And it's gone. But now if I, I don't have one, I can just go add. It tells me what to press here. So I just press the select button. And uh, now it's paired. Now you would have seen them too. I, I don't know what to show you, but I'll show you on this. If I can press delete, press add. You can see this one here. Now this is a grid 20. Uh, I will have one of these in uh, at some point to show you. Now the grid 20 is the new version. Well, they're both current version actually, but the grid 20 is NEMA 2000. Whereas this guy's ethernet. So that can be a little bit more preference to some people when they're wiring boats up. It also gives you the favorites keys, which you may have seen on the um, 1022 and 1222 in the echo map range. But it does not have the ability to turn on and off the system um, remotely. So you have to turn on the head unit from here. But it is slimmer and a bit more sexier. And it does match some of the more units. Where I actually personally prefer this guy because it's nice and chunky. You can see it's not like the slimmest of things. But it means that when you install it, it's very, very robust. And you can use it just about anywhere. Uh, if I press the power button. Oh, hang on. Add pair it again so now we're done go home hold the power button down on the remote control and you can see I've turned off the system so now the unit's off turn the power button on I'll stuff that up actually but anyway you get the idea So there we go, yeah, finally. So that's the grid 10 guys and girls. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us a comment or send us an email, you know, all the usual stuff. If you're interested in purchasing a new Garmin system and you want to know how much we can do one of these for, send us a message and we'll give you a quote. Anyway, thanks very, very much for watching. You know what I mean. It's Sunday night. Have a good one, everyone. I'll see you later.